beautiful people, welcome to my channel. We are in the Narcissist and Empath Dynamic. We are discussing in these lecture series what's the dynamic driving force in human behavior with Narcissist and an Empath. They are opposing, opposite to each other, yes. So we have seen that already in the number of them. Now we are in the Nakshatra of Vishakha. Why are we taking it Nakshatra by Nakshatra? not just houses because there is a flavor change there is a color change when you change the nakshatras and this is more common than you think the Rahu Ketu dynamic in one seven axis because the ascendant changes 12 times in a day right in 12 hours you have 12 different ascendants and how many people are born on this planet so this is more common than you think the way to work with this for both narcissist and empath is to first step understand the dynamic what you're playing out rather than play it unconsciously yes so let's get into it the previous ones are available in my playlist if you are so interested <coughs> Rahu in Vishakha now we are in Vishakha Nakshatra so we are essentially talking about Vishakha as an empath and Vishakha as a narcissist. But since the opposite side, the K2 side, even if we stick it in Vishakha, first three padas are in Libra, the last is in Scorpio. The most exalted form of Vishakha is in Scorpio. So the common theme with all Jupiter nakshatras, Punarvasu Vishakha and Purva Bhadrapada. So what does this give us? Opposite side Ketu is in Bharani and it goes into Scorpio, the last one. Scorpio to Cancer, yes. So Rahu in Vishakha and Ketu in Bharani. So we are still in one seven axis, the seven one axis Libra. Let us first see, we are talking about this. The last Pada is this one. Rahu to Vishakha and Ketu in Kritika, which is in Taurus right so this is shuttling between Libra and Scorpio moving into Scorpio you might say what does this give us first let us see the dynamic of Vishakha itself it's better to be an empath in Vishakha Ketu in the first house because it is driven towards others the theme of Vishakha has to be known for this what is the theme Vishakha is asking you to do to become in life? Right? Let's see that. So before that, we need to understand the dynamic difference between the last Pada and the first three. In the first three, which is Nasus number one here, it's still in Libra. So we are talking about Venus as a narcissist. Right? Aesthetic narcissism. I have more sense of beauty than you have. I have more wealth than you have. Venus is a karka of wealth. Charm and charisma. Materialistic to the max. And Rahu wants everything for itself. So it wants a lot of material for itself. But on the other hand, if we switch the dynamic to narcissist number two, it changes to Mars as narcissist because now it's in Scorpio. Rahu in the sign of Scorpio in Vishakha, the last one can become very intensified. Mars is as it is a very fiery planet, so to speak. Yes. So it can become more egotistical. Everything centered around making the individual more competitive, aggressive in their pursuit of recognition and admiration. <clears throat> Mars, the army commander, he wants all the recognition. Impulsivity will become very strong. Sign of Scorpio is fixed. Rahu needs room for movement. If it is constricted in the sign of Scorpio, everything is constricted, narrow path. Become very impulsive. Can lead to impulsive displays of narcissism. Mars in the last Pada of Vishakha seeks attention and dominance and more aggressive and in immediate manner. Mars is quick. Ego driven actions. Mars may drive the ego to the forefront, making the individual more focused on their own desires. So let's now get into the thing where we see what's Vishakha doing there. 
So in case of narcissist, these tendencies will play out depending upon Mars or Venus. If Rahu is in the first house in Vishakha, these people could become very strategic thinkers, may excel in problem solving, solving your organizational problems, for example, your personal problems, strategic. It's a good temperament of Vishakha. Determination. Rahu in Vishakha individuals are typically determined in pursuing their objectives. Vishakha is chasing a target always. But their life lesson is more along the lines of teamwork. Both opposites are needed. Two different objectives are needed to bring mutually beneficial goals to fruition. Remember that. They need to be socially connected, but Rahu sitting in the first house is detaching because Ketu is on the other side in another nakshatra. We shall see that. This is the problem. Vishakha needs to be connected to social people, people of the other side, all others. That's the driver of Vishakha. But if you become too self-obsessive with Rahu in the first house, and sort of center on your own ambitions, not much is going to get done by Vishakha. That desire for recognition, which precedes your natural higher calling towards moving into higher partnerships is defeated. Ketu on the other side, for empath in Vishakha, it's good. See, the theme of the Vishakha itself is dedication to target achievement. Okay, and moving towards transformation, moving towards working with others. Therefore, Ketu here will do very well. It detaches from the fruits of the materialism and engages nicely with social connections, which are unorthodox in nature, probably even foreign in nature. Why? Well, let's see the thing again, okay. So, Rahu is in Vishakha and other side Ketu is going to Bharani. We shall see this in a minute. So, this dynamic, Vishakha is too self-obsessed here. Detachment from others, whereas the life theme suggests just the opposite. So, it will be easier if Ketu is in Vishakha and Rahu on the other side. The empaths will have an easier time because it's aligning with the natural energies of nakshatra. I want you to remember this. Rahu Ketu just amplifiers and reducers on the theme of the nakshatra itself. So it's easier if it aligns with the theme of the nakshatra. As we saw in Magha, for example. Rahu in Magha is doing very well. The reason being, Magha is as it is, Leo wants to be egotistical. And Rahu amplifies that. So it works with the nakshatra, not against it. Okay. <clears throat> so Rahu in Bharani, Rahu in Vishakha, sorry. Um, this guy, Rahu in Vishakha, Ketu in Bharani, let's deal with them. So in Vishakha, it is amplifying, making them strategic thinkers. They want to be socially driven, all to seek attention as a narcissist. They will use friends, they are detached from friends. Why? Because Ketu is in Bharani, here, this guy. Ketu, remember, is conquer territory. It's symbol, one of the symbols is a flag. So it has conquered all aspects related to sexuality. It will not be attached to the spouse. It has already done that. It's conquered territory for it. So it's detached from sexual aspects. It has got very strong boundaries. Ketu has strong boundaries. The life lesson is bearing the restraint and control. It can become opposite because it can become uncontrollable. So this axis drives a person in this combination very strongly towards gaining all the attention and social attention towards their own strategic thinking means. See how I put that together? Now let's see the other axis where Ketu sits. Now the second narcissist, 
Rahu is in Vishaka. Now it's come to Scorpio. A2 axis. Scorpio to Taurus. Again, both are fixed signs. So Rahu Ketu have a lot of trouble in fixed signs. Rahu in Vishaka, Ketu in Kritika. So Vishaka still remains the same. Let's go to Kritika and see what it does. You have conquered this territory. You have conquered how you have transformed using your own fire. Kritika is an Agni Tattva, ruled by Agni, sorry. So there you go. It is self-sufficient. It has already conquered this territory. It has healing abilities for others, fiery transformation. So Ketu in Kritika, somebody in your ancestral line or you have undergone significant transformations. This becomes a conquered territory. All the life lessons. <clears throat> Ketu in 7th house, you know to do all of this stuff with others, 7th house. Okay? Think of it that way. I'm giving you different perspectives in every single video so that you get this stuff. You start thinking in those terms. So Ketu in Kritika, you have learned how to transform other people around you in your past life or your ancestors have. Now you want to bring that to others. But because Rahu is too centric in the head, you might do that in unconventional ways. That's all there is to it. Let's look at Empath. Now we look at Rahu Ketu is the Empath series. So now Ketu is in Vishakha, Rahu is in Bharani. The other way around, going into Scorpio, it goes from movable sign to the fixed sign axis. What does this bring to us? Okay, we already saw Vishakha, right? As an empath, it will be very good for these kind of people because they are dedicated to target. Rahu is focused on the seventh house, right? Because Ketu is sitting in Vishakha. So you already know how to achieve targets. You're a very strategic thinker. You're very determined in your approach. You have strong boundaries. You want to stay socially connected because Rahu is sitting in the seventh house. Now, in Bharani, first, this guy. In Bharani, what does it lead to? With Rahu in Bharani, there is intense desire for freedom. These people can guide people into freedom and independence. Empath, right? They are concerned about others. They are good risk takers. They can make good coaches. Again, I speak of a lot of coaches for empath because in this age, day and age, in this shifting earth, a lot of these people will be needed. <clears throat> Rahu in Bharani will make a person highly sexual driven. Look at themes, look at the representation. It is represent. So for the empath number two, it goes into Kritika. So what does it provide there? Rahu will provide all the energy towards others, which is good. In Kritika, it can lead to a lot of ambition and leadership. Wants to lead others, wants to become a CEO or a manager, right? People are very fascinated with titles. This is one of them. Because they have detachment from self. This empath needs to find something in the others. They can become highly competitive. Rahu is very good at that. They have desire for power and influence into the other world because Ketu is still sitting in. Vishakha in the first. So they already know how to handle partnerships. These people can become excellent business people. You see what I'm saying? Ambition and empath do not go opposing to one another. You need to understand that. So in Kritika, um, because we are still Seeing Rahu in the seventh house, yes. Ketu is in Vishakha in the first. So dominant empath there. So it has a strong desire to put all these characteristics, so to speak, with the others, assertiveness with others, strong leaders, strong empaths too. 
they can lead other people to transform their lives sometimes you get a very stupid boss but he can lead you to transform he can see your potential probably these people can see others potential very well because they have got all these kind of issues going on in their life and rahu amplifies those and brings that to the forefront that's my take on it reflect on it study these life themes of nakshatras stay in my channel if you want to revisit and look at all of them and i'll see you in the next one meanwhile take care be safe be happy wherever you are knowing the life path is very important of where you walk